Okay guys, welcome back. We're gonna rebuild the Rave valves on this 951 engine. Uh, Rave is Rotax adjustable variable exhaust and their purpose is to restrict or expand your exhaust. So at low RPMs, they restrict it a little bit and at higher RPMs, they open up. And the way that works is there's a guillotine that slides up and down. There's a rubber bellows in here. And when it takes pressure from the crankcase, it actually pulls it up in here and opens your exhaust. On the 951s, this little adjustable ring here that controls the spring pressure, which controls when they open up, um, they are all the way down on the 951. On the 787s, they're flush with the top. Uh, that's just a starting point uh, once you get the engine running and you're doing some tuning, then you'll turn those accordingly, but that's where you start from. Um, this engine has external hoses that go to a solenoid that ultimately goes back to the crankcase underneath. That's where it gets its pressure from. In later models, uh, basically the pressure comes right through the engine. There's a little hole right here, and if you if you're your uh, valve bodies don't already have it, like this one doesn't, you can drill a hole through here, cap that off, and then you can get uh, pressure directly through the engine that way. Um, there's other videos on how to do that. Another modification you can make is you can cut a hole on the top of this here, which I'm gonna do on this one, where you can actually look in there and see if your rave valves are opening or not. Um, a lot of times they stick because of oil and carbon buildup on these. You have to take them out and clean them. But if you have a hole there, you can actually look in there and see it when you rev the engine. You can tell if they're opening or closing. Um, on these guillotines, they almost protrude into the cylinders. And so if you bore your cylinders out, you have to be aware that those rings are now closer to the guillotines and they'll bulge into your uh, exhaust ports just a little bit and they'll catch the, the edge on this and break the rings and ruin the engine. So typically what you do is you shave these back a millimeter or so. There's different ways that you can do that. Um, the other thing that can happen is, you know, e even if you have clearance when you first put the engine back together, uh, the cylinder is going to wear over time and it's going to get bigger, which means those rings are going to get closer and closer to the edge of of, uh, of this valve. So you want to be aware of that too. It's better to go ahead and shave them back uh, from the beginning. Um, also, it's possible that, uh, you know, these things have a hard stop when they come down and, but that's just metal on aluminum in there and those can wear too when the shafts wear down. So it's possible that the ray valve can itself begin to protrude down into the cylinder. So something else to be aware of. So uh, that's basically it and how they work. Um, the rest of this video is going to be about uh, rebuilding these. Okay, so now we've got uh, both the ray valves fully cleaned up. Now's a good time to paint them. And so uh, take these things apart. You just twist that cap down. Don't, don't just twist it down. It's going to pop off because it's got a spring in here. Already been through this, cleaning them up. There's your spring. Just move those aside. Move the spring aside. And then you've got your piston, the plastic part. Orange thing is the bellows. Going to talk about that in a second. First thing I'm going to do is you want to be real careful and take a pick and just kind of gently take off the spring. Don't lose the spring. They're special. And then I'm going to take off that bellows there. And I'm just going to unscrew this cap. You can also unscrew it a little bit and push it through where that little notch is above the surface. And you can spin it off that way. There's our ray valve. There's our piston. And then inside here, you've got a spring, your inner spring. I've already had this apart, cleaned it all up, but there's this little plastic collar. You don't want to lose that. These generally do not come in the kits. It's important because, let you look at this real close. It has 
don't know if the focus is not doing good on that, but it's got a, a beveled surface on the inside, like a concave surface. It's flat here. And that's important because when you put it back together, you want that beveled surface to be fitting down on your O-ring like that. So don't forget about that. You gently pull this thing off. Now, so here's the thing. Um, this thing has a groove around it, and you should have an inner spring clamp that goes around this inside here. Mine does not have that. And uh, I looked at the manuals, and it's interesting because the, the GSX Limited, the supplement manual, which is in 98, because we're working on a gray ghost here, so it's a little weird. It's in between years, and you have to be real careful what you're looking at with part numbers because they're not the same. These are This is the white engine, so all this stuff is for that. And even though this bellows has, it looks like it has a groove for it, and it did the parts listing does not have an O-ring, I'm sorry, uh, a spring clamp for the inside part. The later ones do. So if I, if I look at the 98, you know, the non-supplement, just the straight up 98 and 99 GSX, they do have the clamp. They actually added new numbers, you know, in the parts listing for it. So I don't know if that means that they just didn't put them on these because they didn't think they needed them. And then, you know, the next half year when they figured out where all the problems were, they went ahead and added a spring to it. I'm not sure. Um, but what some people do and what I was going to do, but I'm not going to do because th these are not the right size, is you can either just put it on there without anything if they fit tight enough, or you can put a very small zip tie that goes down in that groove, which is probably going to be what I'm going to end up doing anyway later before I put this on. Or you can find the inner springs on eBay or something like that. So um, the new kit has got the green bellows. And they say these orange bellows are better. Um, when I look at these and I play with them and touch them, they are different put them here. You can see them. Um, this takes almost no pressure to push that down. It's very soft, very pliable. It's also got a tear in it, which is one reason why I need to replace it. This one, very firm to the touch, you know, which means it's just going to add to the resistance on these. So you have to keep that in mind. You're dealing with a different bellows and different, it's going to affect the you know, the expansion pressure and things like that. But I also noticed that the holes, if you can look, I don't know if you can tell. Maybe you can look this way. If you notice the, I can see the green, you know, all the way through the orange. So it's it, this one's a little tighter than this one is. Um, but these are the only ones that they make now. They don't make these anymore. So... You have to go with what you have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bellows. You know what? That's not the first thing I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of marine grease or if you have molly lube or something like that, just a little bit, not very much on the inside of that. And it'll make it go on lot easier just like that make sure that it's seated down in there I am not worried about not having a spring on this or a zip tie it's it's pretty tight okay so that's done so then we take one of our o-rings put it on your rave valve stem that slides up in there like that okay and then this is kind of where it's important make sure you put the inner o-ring there it's the same o-ring in this kit remember our little beveled rider ring it's plastic want to reuse that they don't really wear out 
Make sure it's flat side up. And then the spring goes on top of that. Then what I'm going to do, again, before I put this on, I'm going to put just a little bit of grease on the inside lip of this. Again, not very much at all. You know, and you'll see why. Then I'm just going to screw the piston on top of this. I'm going to screw it all the way down. When I do, it kind of seats itself down in the, the new bellows. But, you know, the bellows is not fully seated all the way up. So I'm just going to kind of carefully... Work it up, and then once it slides up on there, put your ring your spring again. You don't want to, you don't want to break that thing. Okay, so that's all in place. Kind of check it to make sure it moves freely. I can definitely feel it's tighter than it was um, with this one. This outer spring goes on. Now, it doesn't really matter, but I know that this valve is, is facing up because that's the way the hose connections work. You want to make sure you have the opening down. These need to be perpendicular with your retainer thingy here. And then you just pull it up like that and you're done.